Hi, welcome to Carrie Creates Cards. Today we're going to be making a fun little birthday card using the little hedgehogs from Lavinia Stamps. I hope you enjoy watching. If you do, please like and subscribe. Today I'm going to be making a card using this 8x8 card base and I cut this piece of white linen cardstock down to it's 8 by 3.5. So I'm going to be using some distressing. So I'm using chip sapphire, peacock feathers, and bundled sage. Now they're not distress, they're not um pardon me, they're not oxides, they're just the regular inks from my old stash because I just find that I like stamping over the regular distressings better. I don't know if that's just me. I find I love the oxide inks. I absolutely love them. I love the chalkiness and that colour, that beautiful, delicate colour that you get with them. But I find if you have any kind of a detailed stamp that um, you'll get a shadow on the stamping. But anyway, that's just me. So I'm going to be using these beautiful stamps by Lavinia. And this one is the Wallace family. They're the little hedgehogs. Don't know where my brain is this morning. And I'm going to be using, it's one of my new ones. It's not a new stamp, but it's newish to me. It's my Blackberry one. And this one is always new, also new to me. It's the Bellflower Vine. So I'm going to start with my 8x8 card base. A bit different than what I would usually do. I'm going to pop that into the corner there on my stamping platform. And just pop the couple of magnets down. And I'm going to start with the Blackberry stamp. And I want to come in. I might actually pull that out from, from the edge. I just want to come in, pick that up. I know it's hitting the top here, but not to worry. And I'm coming in with my VersaFine Clear in Nocturne. So we'll stamp that up. Sorry, we'll ink it up. Like I said, I don't know where my brain is this morning. It's a beautiful sunny day out. I think the weather is finally beginning to pick up again. So hopefully it is. I just find at this time of year, I don't seem to spend as much time in the craft room. Like many of you, I'm sure you like to be out and about. when the weather is that bit better. Right, I'm going to have to try and get that down a bit better. Maybe just apply a bit more pressure. It's, it's because of this that I said didn't matter, but obviously it does. Oh yeah, that's it. That's much better. Going to give that a drop of water, wipe it off, especially on the plain white background. It wouldn't be forgiving if if I got black ink on it. So I think I'll move move it down like that and. Yeah, just pop it here. It's not ideal and I know I could turn it the other way. But I think this will be fine. Yep, happy with that. Thank you. 
just want to get the end of it there because we'll, we'll move this because this might end up actually being covered over so I'd like to see the tips of some of the blackberries it's this thing again that's causing the problem there just apply a bit more pressure should be okay yeah that's fine so I've just had to push it down a bit more and now the side isn't cooperating is it push it in apologize for this yeah as I thought we're just going to have to go with it and hope for the best probably could have done this without the platform in hindsight but you never know if you need to get another go a second go with it if it doesn't print properly the first time or stamp properly I think this will be okay though yeah I think that's perfect so I'll just clean this up so next I'm wanting to come in with this bellflower vine I just love that blackberry stamp isn't it really beautiful or is that just me I just think it's gorgeous so I'm going to pop the bellflower down in the bottom here also inking it up in the nocturne because I just want I want the background to be understated I don't I want just want um, it to be black and white monochrome I guess is what the word I'm looking for just another little bit there that in a bit because again the edge will catch it otherwise that'll be fine sorry that I'm inking it up off camera but as you know I'm just just tapping it with the ink pad Another little bit of ink there. And I'm going to replace my lid. Yeah, I'm liking that. So next I'm coming in with my piece of white linen cardstock and I've got my distress inks and my brushes. So I'm going to start with the bundle sage. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to ink my brush up well. So I just want to get a tissue there. I'm just going to start on the corner and work my way in. Now I'm going to cover maybe just slightly over half of the cardstock with the bundle sage really like this color as well And by half, I mean halfway up, I should have said. Go the whole way across, but just... 
just blend that a bit there just over halfway up the cardstock I think that's okay these nails getting in the way Now, so the next thing I'm coming in with is the peacock feathers. Just get some ink on there. Just want to start off the card and work my way in. And as I said to you there recently in a video, these inks, some of them, I've had them for years and years. And this is, this is one that I've had for, oh, got a long, long time. Because since afterwards then I brought the oxides, I have my distressing since before the oxides were out. So that'll tell you. And they're still, you know, they're still going. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with them. And just coming down a bit there with that. Maybe the same here. Just want to get a nice blend between the two colours. So it's worth making the investment. Let's come back with that. If you look after them. Obviously, if you're not going to replace your lids, then they won't last. But if you do, then most certainly the lids are made very well. They do create a good seal. You'll get a long time out of them if you just look after them. So again, starting off the card and working in, this is a much darker colour. I just kind of want this up around the top. And I'm actually going to leave that there and I'm going to come back with the peacock feathers brush. I'm not going to put any more ink on it, but I'm just going to go over the two colours just to blend them together. Because I didn't want the, the dark blue coming down too far. I might actually need to go in and pick up some more peacock feathers there. Just picking the ink up off the glass mat now because there is some there, may as well use it. Just come in lightly now with the darker blue. Go back over the blend. Not heavy handed, just very light. Yeah, and I'm quite happy with that. And I'm loving them colours, I must say. And I love this, um, you know, this kind of in-between piece. If you ever look at a sunset or a sunrise, you will get that part, excuse me, where the colours kind of float into each other. So I'm really happy with that. So I'm just coming in with my heat tool next because I want to make sure that this background is completely dry because I'm going to emboss my images that I'm stamping on this. So I'll just go and do that. Okay, hopefully that's dry enough. So next I'm going to come back in with my stamping platform. I'm going to pop that into the corner. Thank you. 
and as I said I'm going to be using the Wallace family cute little hedgehogs So let's see where I want to put these. There we are. So I'm coming back in with my Versafine Clear and Nocturne and I'm going to ink these little fellas up I just move it so that you can see what I'm doing this time. just another go because it's the linen excuse me it doesn't stamp perfectly first go but it will and I love the effects of the linen cardstock so it's worth the bit of extra effort I feel Place my lid there actually I should have come in with this first of all but hopefully it was dry anyway with the the heat tool so I'm just going to come in with this little piece of paper just to catch my embossing powder and I'm using a clear embossing powder so just Pour that over my little hedges, this little Wallace family. And I think that that's going to be fine. So just pop that back in. in case give that a wipe and I'll come back in with my heat tool just love watching the magic happen there and I'm you know I'm just going to give the little one a little bit more here with that now so next thing I'm going to do is I'm coming back with my 8x8 card base and I'm going to pop I think I'm going to put a bit of black around the edge of this just come in with my ruler my black sharpie just think it'll be a nice contrast on the the white behind. And somebody said to me 
there recently that um, I should put the black down first in case I make any mistakes. I am very careful because if I'm honest, I have destroyed a project once with it. Well, I just had to trim it more. But um, the reason I don't do it is I don't always know if I want to have the black outline until my project is finished. So if you do it first, you're stuck with it, whether you want it or not. And I feel not every project requires it, but I like to have a look when it's finished and just see, does it need anything more? So that's my reasoning behind that. Let's get rid of this. And yeah, very happy with that. So we'll bring back in. I need to pop a bit of double-sided tape. And again, I'm going to use my wide tape because of it being heated. Just find it helps with the warping of it. It, it makes it all sit down. So therefore you have no little pieces that bulge up here and there. If I just do around the edges sometimes, if I have heat emboss something, I find that it might not sit properly on your cardstock. Where is my little pokey tool? It's hiding on me, so I'm just going to come in with this. Pick that up. I haven't a hope of getting it with these nails. And then I'll pop down my second piece of double-sided tape. The reason I did that is because it's slightly gone over the first one and I would have had a job getting the backing off if I hadn't done it this way. Here we are. But again, just pick that. I just want to get the placement right on this. I'm glad I went up a bit further with these ones because as you can see I didn't quite get the end of that one but it's fine it looks quite nice the way it is. I thought that I had that cut better because actually I didn't want that strip of white along the edge. Did I go out too far? No I didn't. But sometimes even though you're convinced that you've cut something perfectly you haven't but that's just a small small detail. I could run a little bit of black maybe along there. Maybe I'll do it off camera. Do you know I won't. I'll be brave. Just going to give this a wipe. So I'm just going to touch the white cardstock behind it. And I don't want to come up too far. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better actually. So I'll have to do the other side now as well. And as I say, no mistake in art. And I could have just pretended that I was going to do this anyway. If I really wanted to, but I didn't. So sometimes it's good to show mistakes anyway, because Sometimes you make a mistake, you can be a bit baffled as to, you know, oh God, what am I going to do with that now? It's not what I wanted. But yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. It does, it completely rectifies that issue. So one more thing I'm going to do with this, it's actually going to be a birthday card. So I want to put a sentiment on it. Okay, because 
I'm using the white linen cardstock. I've decided not to go ahead with the acrylic block because the card is finished and I don't want to destroy it. So I'm just going to pop my magnets down. And I've got these sentiments that I got from the magazine paper crafter. And I'm going to choose a sentiment from it. So I've got happy birthday, wishing you a happy birthday. What does that say? No. Birthday celebrations. Have a great birthday. That one might be nice, even though I'm liking the size more of this one, I guess. Yeah, I think the size of that one will be good. Just want to get it lined up properly now, make sure that it's it's straight. And I think it is. You can see the little lines on the linen. Kind of helps get the placement right. So this time I'm going to come in and I'm just going to put a bit of that anti-static powder down first. In case there was any oil on my hands or anything like that. So I'm going to ink it, ink it up, sorry, with the Nocturne. That came out very well for the first go. The B needs another little bit. So we'll go again. Yes, that's better. So I'm just going to come back in with my clear embossing powder. My one is a paper mania one. And again with these things, last you forever. Because most of the powder gets put back into the jar. And as you know, I should have done that. I should have done that before I put it onto the card base. But I had in my head thought that I might cut out a piece of cardstock and put it on. But looking at it, I think might spoil the look of it. So that's why I've done it that way. So I'm just going to heat emboss that now. There we go. Don't want to overdo it because as you can see, it's starting to warp. I might just come in and give it a blast at the back. Don't know if that helped very much. Quite a few mistakes today, but we learn by our mistakes, I guess, and I think this will be fine. I might need to put a heavy book on top of it for a little while. Just going to show you that I'm going to put the piece of paper and a couple of heavy books on top and I'm going to leave it for maybe 20 minutes or so. I'm going to go and have a cup of coffee. Okay, that seems to have sorted out the warping issue. Just left it for about 15 minutes and I've come back. So I'm very pleased with the way that has turned out. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. And if you have, please like and subscribe. And as always, thank you.